Hello, everyone. Welcome to Whip Finished Wednesday tonight. It is Wednesday night, and got me and Misha, our German Shepherd. We might rename this show to Tying with Misha because she's really enjoying being live on TV these days. Um, but we're so excited to have everyone joining us. Action packed evening. We'll start off with Katie, and she's going to go over some of the um, uh, some of the flies that were entered this week for the uh, for the drawing. She's going to show some of those, and um, she's going to do the drawing for an Umqua fly box with some ir iridescent Frenchies in it. She's going to uh, also draw for some razor scissors and. Um, a dubbing twister from Umqua. So that's super cool. What's up, Jimmy and Brandon of Moonlit Fly Fishing? What's going on? So um, <clears throat> anyway, before we get, or while we're getting started, wait on everyone to log on. Um, today, we're going to be tying the top shelf hopper. Uh, and that is a hopper that is designed by Drew Ross. Hello, Christine and Mark over at Chasing Feathers Fly Company. It is wit finish time. I hope you like that new stacker you've got coming along, coming on the way. I don't know where mine went to. I think Katie probably put them in a special spot. Y'all caught me in a, um, here it is. Um, you caught me in a um, time that I haven't been in in a long time, and my desk is a wreck. I've been doing really good keeping everything cleaned and picked up, but right now it is a mess, and Katie will attest to it. Um, so, Mark, I hope you enjoy the stacker, and uh, I'm sure some of y'all are looking forward to seeing some of these flies that were entered. So, Katie, if you, she is almost ready. She's getting every, she's got the Misha on her side now, so she's having to deal with that. So, um, I'll turn it over to Katie and let her um, do the drawing and chat for a minute, and then we'll get going. Hey, everybody. Welcome to It Finished Wednesday. Let's do the drawing for this week to see who our winner is for... Show us what they're going to win. They're going to win the, the Inqua LT Mini Fly Box with a full row of iridescent yeah. Frenchies, freshly tied. And they're also going to win an Inqua dubbing spinner. This is the dub loop spinner by Inqua, the Dreamstream. And I think I'm cutting out. Well, we'll just go over to me for a second while Katie gets her camera worked out. Um, what's up, John Collins and Mike Phillips? Good to see you guys hopping on. And I think Katie got it got it worked out. She's no almost. I think her camera went to sleep. Um, and she was getting ready to say a pair of scissors from Oakwa. So um <clears throat> so real quick while she's getting that worked out, I'm gonna go over the materials uh so we can keep on rolling. The hook we're going to be using, um, you can use a few different hooks on this on this uh, fly. What's up, Patrick? But tonight we're going to use the, the A-Rex Freshwater 530 in a size 12. Um, the reason I'm using the 530, not a 531, is um, the this does have a micro barb on it, and I like that if I'm going to use this as a dropper. Um, however, recently I've been tying my droppers on tag, so I don't have I'm not tying to the bend, but um, it is nice to be able to have that micro barb. Uh, so your your tip it doesn't slip off of your dropper, and it is simple to pinch down if you're not going to need it. But we're going to use the the Arex Freshwater 530 in size 12. Um, for foam, we're going to use all sorts of different foams. We've got some craft store from Hobby Lobby two millimeter foam, um, and I don't know light and dark brown. I'm sure, it's got a fancy color root beer or something. Um, and then because Craig commented something about it being a Christmas fly. We're going to do a red and green uh, version of it. Mike, she is hunting. That is for sure. What's up, Truman? Um, and for hackle, Mike, since you asked, we're going to be using, I've got a, just, this is just a natural brown Whiting Farms uh, red label saddle here. That's the one that we posted today and the one that's in the vice. But for the red one, just because I don't get to pull it out very often, I hope I've got the color. Yes, we've got a, this is from Charlie Craven, Dragon's Blood over Grizzly. So this red Grizzly Whiting Farm saddle will be perfect for a um, uh, Christmas fly. And uh, dubbing. Now, Drew uses uh, uh, hairline, um, 
it's the the one that has the hare's ear and the ice stuff mixed in hare's ice or hairy ice always time i drop my drop hits off the eye drop, okay yeah so that's um so brandon what i've been doing is is where i've been urinifying a lot uh if i'd go to to switch over i just clip my top uh nymph off and tie my uh my nymph there so it's not a direct so two knots on the eye and that's what i did for a long time is i had two knots on the eye i had the knot coming from my leader and i had that tied in the eye and then tie another knot on the, the eye and have it go into my dropper and i found it works better now having that um having that short tag so there's not a direct contact um between the the two so it doesn't pull down as much i don't know probably splitting hairs here um well, glad to hear that, Patrick, for sure. Um, we're, if you notice, Moonlit Fly Fishing's on here now, and we're going to be tying with some of their beads coming up soon. They've got some really cool colored beads. Um, we got a hold of him because someone who's about this tall, blonde, and has a really good name. Um, what's up, Ken from uh, New Zealand? Um, someone is getting a new, I hope he's not on right now, but getting a whole new fly fishing outfit that, um, we're excited about and we'll be showing that, uh, after Christmas, but, um, that for a 10 year old, he's going to be pumped. Um, and, uh, so yeah, anyway, so that, that's the quick little down dirty about the, uh, that's right, man, you got it. Um, that's down and dirty of the of the materials. The dubbing, sorry, the dubbing um, as opposed to using that hair's ice dubbing. I'm gonna do I'm making it really complicated, but I'm gonna use the Semperfly Sparkle dubbing mixed with the Semperfly Super Fine, because I like using dry fly dubbing on dry flies. Um, mixing those two together with a pinch of ice dub. So I'll show you how I mix those. And legs, the one that I posted earlier today. Had these Montana Fly Company centipede legs. Yeah, white, speckled white, medium centipede legs. And as I was looking for a Christmas leg, I found these ones that I bought at Orvis. I'm a stickler when I'm out at fly shops when I see cool colors. This is just white, barred black, but it has a cool little, I don't know if you can see it on the, the camera. It's got a cool sparkle to it. So when we move to the other camera, you'll be able to see it. Um, did you try tying on a dropper loop? I have not done that. I have not um, gone through and put a um like a tippet ring on the back um that's uh but it, but I, I think that would pro probably work similar to tying it off the bend um but I, i've yet to try that i get to keep my teeth and i hope you're getting more than more than cold all right so katie you ready sure cool we'll flip it back over to katie now okay i'm back um so yeah we're going to be doing a drawing for the winner of the Umqua LT mini fly box with a row of iridescent Frenchies, freshly tied, and a pair of the Dreamstream Umqua uh, scissors and the um, dubbing spinner from Umqua. So three really awesome products from Umqua for our big winner tonight. For tying up last week's fly, which was Lance Egan's Tungsten, Tungsten Surveyor. Surveyor. So... Let's see who our big winner is this week. And, We're gonna... and also for commenting on the YouTube video, right? Right. You Steve, could either... Steve Yates commented a bunch. I'll be surprised if he doesn't win. You could either uh, post your fly that you tied um, with hashtag what finished Wednesday on Instagram, or you could have commented after the live stream last Wednesday, um, left a comment for us here on YouTube, and your name was entered for the drawing. So let's see who our winner is this week. Drum roll, please. All right. So, Jared Blazer. Congratulations, Jared Blazer. You're a big winner this week for a pair of Umqua Dreamstream scissors, a dubbing spinner, and an Umqua fly box with a row of freshly tied iridescent Frenchies. Congratulations, Jared. Um, reach out to us here on YouTube or on Instagram. Let us know your address, and we will send you a care package in the mail. So, let's get to tying, everybody. I'm looking for something. You know what I'm looking for. Well, right now, John is looking for um, a pair of uh, Here, scissors. So while he's doing that, I'm going to show you guys some awesome pictures from this week. And we have got 
some really cool flies that you all tied that I'm loving. Um, this one here by John Erdy Man Fly Tying. And we've also got electric tires, tungsten surveyor version. Yo, John Collins. We have, I can't read that name, but I think it's, um, um, uh, who is that? Is that our boss? That's got to be our boss. Our boss. Yeah. That's our boss. Jimmy Roop. It's nice to meet you, Tim. Your house. Oh my glasses is on. I think that says D Bishop 32. D Bishop 32. Yes, ma'am. Christine. And delayed harvest junkie. And I'm probably miss some. I'm not quite as good at digging through Instagram as John is, but hey, great job this week, everybody, with um, those cool flies. And thanks for letting me share them tonight. So, yes, Ken, those are some good looking flies for sure. There's some fishy flies. And Moonlit, Katie is, or Brandon, Katie is doing a good job doing her best pronouncing the names because some of these names I, I butcher quite often. Well, when so, it's a handle, I'm not sure exactly like what letters are part of what word sometimes. You know, it's not always clear. So I don't want to mess anybody's cool. Like they're like, no, don't you get it? That's how you say it. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I don't always get it. So, you know, um, but anyway, uh, did you want me to show these scissors? Sure. Yeah. So for next week, let's, so we've got a pair of Renamed FS1 scissors and these are the small ones. These are, I was looking for a pair of the super cuts like I've got and you can hold up the difference. You can, you can hold these, these ones I've been using for the past couple of years. Um, th those might be a touch bigger, but the FS ones are, are the finest ones they've got. And, um, but they're not much, they're, they're almost the same size. So, um, that's what we're going to give away for next week. So if you really want a pair of Renamed scissors, all you have to do is use hashtag what finished Wednesday, um, on your top shelf hopper or your variation, of the top shelf hopper, um, and, or, um, Comment on this video. Comment, comment on the video after after it's posted. So once it's posted and, and it's got the comments available, comment on those. And the Amaze Man, um, I don't know if I saw yours, unless you're a different name on on Instagram. But Katie, there was about a dozen that um, that were posted. Katie, can I have my scissors back? I'm gonna have a hard time with the. Hey, she put them right here. Um, so. Good day, Brandon. All right, so let's go and get started. We went over the uh, the material list at the beginning, so I'm going to take the fly out of the vise. Here is what we're going to tie right here, um, which is the top shelf hopper. Like I said, this is size 12. You see how that body is nice and buggy. It's nice and sparkly. We've got the hackle in there. We've got some legs. We've got a wing with nice sparkly underwing. The sparkle because we've got light everywhere on this uh, this fly. Uh, isn't showing up real good, but there is plenty of sparkle in there. Um, so this is a phenomenal um, dry, dry fly for a dry dropper setup. So we'll we'll set this one aside and let's get a hook in the vise. What's up, Bill? Howdy doody. Glad you're hopping on to for sure. Um, so now one thing when I'm putting this this hook in the vise. If you'll notice, um, I like the hook shank. This is basically just a stimulator hook um, or a sedge hook, as they as they call it. And um, Katie, if you'll if you'll switch over to the vise. So normally, when I'm tying a stimulator, I'll tie it more. It's kind of that's, that's somewhat exaggerated, but I'll have the hook hook eye going down, uh, and that's the way I tie it. But for this, I'm going to do it pretty much perfectly straight. And um, the reason is the way this, um, the way the fly rides is going to be, we don't, I don't want the, the rear end of it going down the hook shank. And I'll, I'll just show you. It'll make more sense here in a second. Let me put my glasses on so you can see. And for anyone that's new in here, feel free to ask questions. Um, 
and there's no, the only dumb question is the question that goes unasked. Now, I might not have the answer for it, but there's some phenomenal tires on here tonight, and we will come up and we'll come up with an answer for sure. So we want to uh, tie roughly, maybe a little bit better than the halfway mark, and we'll tie the thread down just a little bit. Now, this is the Semperfly ADOT beige thread. Um, so I just went down, back up, and what I'm trying to do is build a little, little bit of texture on my fly, on the hook shank. Now I'm going to go down to a far, as far down the hook shank as I want the body to go. I'm going down, if you notice, kind of far. That's that's about good right there. You see, see that? Maybe one hook wrap or one wrap too much. Then I come back up with open spiral wraps. Now where this thread is right now, is it pouring rain? It's been pouring rain all day here, Truman. Um, where my thread's coming up is pretty much right where the hook starts going down because I'm going to kind of fill this part in with foam. Um, so that's why I've got that that part there. So let's switch back over to the tying desk. Honey. So I've got um, some strips of foam here that I've already cut out. And like I said, I don't know what colors they are. But this one is just from Hobby Lobby, sand maybe. It's from Hobby Lobby. And the other one... Um, gosh, I don't know where it came from. It might actually be a official fly tying color, but, um, I'm going to show in a minute how I cut the, um, the strips with a cutting mat, straight edge, and one of, one of these. And you can well, get that craft foam at other craft stores too. It doesn't yeah, have to be hot. Walmart, Walmart, wherever. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to take my, uh, my foam and I want to tie the dark color in first because that's going to go on top. And that is, oh my gosh, I can't tell you how many times I tie them upside down. I get so darn mad. Um, be here shortly. I'm sure. Yep. Don, I'd say it will. So I've got um, just a little, little point here. I'll go ahead and cut this one while Katie's got the camera on this angle. Cut that. I'm just in, when I first started tying with foam, I was all super careful, making sure I had the points absolutely perfect, and it doesn't matter. I mean, if it's close, that's fine. Um, so I switched back over to the vise, and as you can see, I've got my... Um, um, Katie, can we switch back over to the vise? There. Yeah, sorry, I'm reading comments. And stuff. Oh, see, guess what Katie gets for, for actually paying attention well, to what you got to say. I was say. busy doing the other stuff for you, and now I'm catching up on the comments. Ugh. Hey, everybody. Hey, Patrick. Hey, Ross Boss. Hey, Rocky. Hey, Don. Oh, darn it. Hey, John Collins. You guys had some great pictures this week. Thanks for letting us share those on Loot Finish Wednesday. Yes, you'll have to, to go back and watch and see your flies in force. And, and I for don't know if Jared's on here or not. Well, I just now realized I wasn't even live on Instagram. So now we're live on Instagram. Oh, no. Okay, I apologize. Well, Jared, I pinned at the top that you're, you were the winner of the drawing this week. So cool. reach out to us. Thank you, Katie. I'll tell you, she keeps Hey, she, Kim B. Hey, Katie everybody. Keeps us, Katie keeps us under control. All right. So everyone on, on Instagram that's hopping on, uh, if you can, zoom over on uh, YouTube and you will see quite a bit better. But uh, you haven't missed anything. We just put some thread on the hook. Now we've got our foam, and I'm going to um, start tying it in. So now, let me ask you. Yes, ma'am. I want you to be sure that you're tying in <laughs> the right color of foam in the right order. Now that's, stop and think, because this is a good tip for everybody. Because things get flip flopped around, and when you're doing two colors, the next mm -hmm. thing you know, you're all done and you're proud of it, and then you realize. That you need to put the camera got on the, you because you can see your, your facial And then you spread, realize, right? okay, like five times in a row, five times in a row, mm -hmm. you you realize that you tied the wrong color in the wrong spot five times in a row. It, it, it gets me every time Kitten Ken B is, is laughing with you. So, so yeah. So that's what see, I was saying they're earlier. laughing because they've done that before. Yeah. Like they get done and they're like, wow, this looks so great. That's what I was saying oh, earlier. No. Because if you see this one is brown on top, of course you can't see that from here, but YouTube or Instagram can brown on top. And this one is wrong. The fish will never bite it because the color's on the wrong side. That is it's messed junk. up. Mm -mm. It's absolute junk. But junk. that's that's why I said that earlier. Uh, make sure you um, 
make sure you take your time and get it done. Um, get it done right because it's aggravating. But the color we want on top is the first color we're going to tie in. So I basically set the, the foam facing me. So it's, it's basically going straight up and down. And I just start catching it in and I roll it back with moderate tension on my thread. By the way, that's what Gary told me to say tonight. So okay, he's even though he's not on here, he's still looking out for you. Yes. I would I'd expect nothing less. Okay, so as you see, I've got that that kind of loosely wrapped in. I want to look and make sure that I've got all my thread covered up here because that's why I was really careful when I went down. I'm at work. I wish I could watch on YouTube. Got to watch on here. A second. I, at South Flaco, I know the feeling. Uh, trust me, I know the feeling. So um, I've got that kind of loosely tied in. I'm going to go back down to get that to tighten it up just a bit. It doesn't have to be anything too, super fancy, but just tighten her up. Now we're good. Now what I'm, what I'm looking for is that we're centered like it is and that everything down here is tied in the way we want. Now we're going to do our underside color. So we've got our, our lighter tan. We're tied in the same way. It's angled towards me, so it's going almost straight up and down. And I'm doing kind of a moderate tension on my thread wraps. And then I can kind of brace it with my finger and tighten up. Now I've got that loosely tied in. Now I just want to look at it. You'll see right here where um, the, the top foam needs to come down just a pinch. So when I tighten up, I'll we'll hold both pieces of foam and make sure I get both of them tied in as good as I can. Now, see how the, the curved shank, see how we kind of straightened this part of the, the shank? So when we bring it over, now we've got a nice little, nice little hump. Um, the, the fly is going to be more straight on the bottom. Uh, and it's not going to be like a, a back end that's going to sink. It's got a little extra foam back there, and we're good. So let's is that what that is two millimeter foam, Joel. So on um, the size twelve is probably ten. I, I, personally, I wouldn't tie it any bigger than ten, but that's just because we're in Tennessee. Um, I'd go from ten to fourteen uh, with with this this pattern. So size fourteen with this pattern on two two millimeter foam. So it's two pieces of two millimeter foam. Um, so now let's switch over to the tying desk and we'll get our dubbing going. So like I said, Drew uses a uh, Hairs Ice Dub from Hairline and I've got the color somewhere that he uses and I can't find it. So we're going to make our own. Wait, what dubbing. did you just say? Uh, Katie misplaced it. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got some uh, cream. Um, super fine. I just pulled out some uh, some little pieces here. As you can see, the, oh, there we go. Um, pull out a little bit there, and I'm going to take a little bit of the seal. You use cream, but I think seal's got a little more color to it. Um, so I'm going to kind of card that together, lay that there, maybe one little pinch more. And I'm going to card these together like so. So I'm just um, making my own little blend. Hey, sweary angler. Fancy seeing you on here. Um, and now we're now we're good. Now, after that's somewhat mixed up, I'm gonna get a little piece of um now this is uh, uh white semperfly eye stabbing. I'm gonna pull out just just a pinch. I'm just gonna lay it right there. So that's it. So now I've got my dubbing ready to go. I just grab grab this. Break it off and twist it on. I'm not trying to get a super thin noodle, but you can you can always dub over your dubbing. Once you get like a big fat dubbing noodle, it's hard to get it really tight. So I, I like putting my dubbing on smaller chunks. It's a bit time consuming, and you can always direct dub if you want to. But I found um, just doing it like this has got a nice mix. Um, keeps everything buggy. And um, you're ready to go. So we've got a nice long dubby noodle here. And I'll set this clump right here in case I want to do, in case I want to add to it a little bit. And we'll just bring this back 
That's the longest dubby noodle I've done. Wow. Bring this back to the, the foam. Now that first wrap, I want to make sure I kind of use my, my vice and I go all the way under. I'll make sure I'm going all the way to the back here. And it's okay that it's thin. That means I can do multiple wraps here. And now we're going to come up. Build this up a little bit more. Go up to where I started my thread. Now I'm going to go back. Now we're going to go back up and I need a little bit more dubbing. Perfect. Well, somewhat perfect. Looks like a big mess right now on the, the TV. Okay. What's up, Ryan? How are you doing over there on Instagram? And thank you for saying something, because if you're on Instagram, if you can, hop over on YouTube. And Ryan likes to watch on, comment on Instagram and watch on YouTube. So he's double not, I believe. But um, if you can, go over to our YouTube channel, watch. And if you guys aren't already, and if you get a look, learn something, or if we've earned it, as they say, we'd really appreciate you guys subscribing to our little channel. We've been doing this show for years and just recently switched over to doing it on YouTube. And it is a blast. But um, it's hard, kind of hard starting over. Okay. So we've got our, uh, our nice round body done. Then we'll pull everything back and I'm going to go up and kind of open. I'm just, once again, just like I did on the back side of the fly, just covering my, my hook shank. This gives the materials a little something to bite into. So that's, um, that's ready to go. I'll take my, my foam. I'm going to pull up and you kind of want to stretch it a little bit. Kind of want to give it a little bit of stretch, push down, now we're going to do one very light wrap, two, hold it in place, pull tight. So now we've got that one tied in. One more, and we'll put a couple wraps in front. So now that's locked in. So the reason I put those wraps in front is when I pull now, the hook's going up and down, but my, my foam's not spinning. And that's what I want to keep my foam from doing. So now the next one, do the exact same thing. Hold it, kind of pull it a little bit tight. I'm going to do, do one wrap that's loose. Two, hold it tight. Pull tight. Put a third one there. Pull over. And now we're good. Now I'll bring my thread back up to the front. <coughs> Excuse me. And now I'm going to do, I'm just, I'll tie these in together. So I make sure my thread's behind my eye, but not too awful close to it. Because you can crowd your eye. Do one, two, hold tight, pull. I'm gonna pull up and put it same thing, same reason we did it on the back end. That just kind of locks everything in. So now I've got our, our basic body made and it's all all good. Um, so now let's do some cross wraps back. We're just kind of lashing all this down. And now you all that watch know I don't like using glue that much. I'll use Sally Hansen's like, like it's going out of style, but um, I do like putting just a touch of glue on here and doing it now versus when I go to trim, because I don't know, I'm not like an engineer or anything. I've never been confused with that smart being that smart, but if I've got my fancy scissors and I put super glue on the wet super glue on them, I imagine that's going to dull them kind of quick. So I put a little bit of um, this is just zap a gap. And um, now I can push these together. I'll seal them, seal them up. And that's a step I don't think Drew even does. And if you don't want to do it, that's fine. No problem. So that'll give that enough time by the time I finish the fly. So that'll be dry and I can cut it when it's done. And just so it'll be out of my way, I will give it a quick little trim on the other side of the foam. So we'll just kind of take a look at everything, make sure we're straight up and down this way. We're looking good this way. And so far, we're looking pretty good. So I'm going to bring my thread to about the midpoint or so. And I'm going to grab a piece of uh, crystal flash. So this is the, the crystal pearl um, 
Semper Fly. If, if you don't have this, the Midge Crystal Flash will work fine too. Just standard Midge Crystal Flash. I like the, the small size of this uh, Crystal Pearl versus the, the standard Crystal Flash. Uh, but the Midge Crystal Flash will work fine too. But for this size or this length, just because I've tied literally a few of these, I'm going to cut it. These are two pieces. I cut in half, so now I have four pieces. And we'll put them together again, hopefully. Cut them one more time. Now I've got eight pieces. I'm going to take one strand out. So I've got seven pieces, and that's that's good for this fly. Uh, I know it's kind of silly. Seven, get like eight pieces, probably just fine. So now I'm going to go, go back here. I'm going to tie this first clump. I'm going to have it somewhat on my side of the hook shank. See how this right here is on, on, the, on the one side? Bring that back. I grab a second clump, bring it all the way back. I got one fiber. It's a little bit short, but it'll be okay. So now you see how I've got a nice little spread there of, um, of that crystal flash. Make sure it's all lashed down nice and tight. I'm holding it kind of, hold it up. I'm building up a little bit of thread there. I'll explain why in a minute. So you see, we got a nice little V there. So that's that's kind of what, that's what we want there. All right. The next material, uh, Drew uses the macrame yarn, um, and I don't have that white. So we're going to use parapost material. This is it, guys. This is I use this stuff all the time. I like it because it's straight. It looks good. It is that what fine. it's called? Is parapost yeah, material? Poly yarn. Thank you. Okay. Buddy. Poly, okay. use simple like poly yarn and cream. Um, Just so checking. Thank you, Katie. So, Katie keeps me out of trouble, if you didn't know that. And all y'all are like, yep, I know that. All right, so I'm going to take my pair of post material. I'm going to tie this in same way I did that, that crystal flash, tying it on one side of the hook shank. So it's kind of, it's a little more on my side. I grab this other piece. I'm going to go back. I want to make sure this is tied in almost to the front that looks good i'm gonna tie this on the other side so you can see it'll have like a little part right there you the missed a tiny little piece oh come on get off of there thank, thank you. you thank Ooh. you Ooh. Ooh. That was a close one that was a close one all right so you can see right right here it's gonna be kind of hard to see unless i point it out see how the thread goes from here and it's kind of it's kind of angled down so if I were to wrap my dubbing, it'd be a slight angle here. So I'm going to try to build up some thread here to kind of capture all this down so my thread will eventually go straight up and down. Now, the reason I want this part to be straight up and down and this part to be straight up and down is this is where I'm going to wrap my hackle. And this is where I'm going to put a little dubbing. And I don't want my hackle, my first wrap, to be angled like this. I want my first wrap to be going straight up and down. Yeah, trigger point fiber. Trigger point fiber is good. Uh, there's a lot of different colors in it. Um, it's got some great colors. Um, yes, Ross, you could uh, definitely do this for a beetle pattern. Be a big beetle, but you could definitely that'd be that'd be really cool. Um, It'd be a scarab. A scarab. Good job, honey. Kitty. Good grief. Okay. Um, so we got that tied in, and I want to I want to do what I was just talking about. So. Straight up and down. Just hold that back. And like I said, I'm just kind of building that up. Now we should be should be fine. So that that band now is is more straight up and down. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. So I had that fancy. Here it is. So now we're gonna go to the sparkly. See a little bit of glimmer in there. Shine. You can see some of it on the thing. This is just. One of the fine fly shop finds. I'm gonna grab one one leg. Put it back up. But before I do that, I'm gonna tie my Moonlight says on. purple works. Do what? P purple works. Oh, it does. Absolutely. Well, I was gonna the next one I was gonna have everyone just kind of pick and I was gonna We were we were gonna do a, a top Elf on the shelf. Yes. So the next one is going to be a elf on the top shelf hopper. <laughs> there you go. An elf on the top shelf hopper. 
in, just in case you guys don't already have enough Elf on the Shelf stuff going on, or none at all. Now, now Brandon's favorite color. Brandon's going to get along fine here with Moonlit because I've seen a lot of his stuff, and he absolutely loves purple. purple. Sweary Angler Flies always talks about purple. We we, we do purple a lot. Um, we we love purple. Um, sorry. So we've got my, if you notice right here, tied in my, my hackle. It's, uh, there you go. It's tied in on that side right there. Ready to go up. And I'm going to take my leg here. I just have one. I'm going to cut it in half. And we're going to do it really simple. I'm just going to grab it. I'm not really paying much attention to the legs. I'm just going to do two wraps straight up and down. I'm going to take them, pull them to one way, pull them the other. And now I'm going to work on the back side. What I want to do is leave enough room to put a couple wraps behind them. Um, and now I'm going to do the front. And I'm going to leave enough room to do a couple wraps in front of them. So making sure that they're all even is kind of important. Now, I haven't brushed this out yet. And I'll do it right now just for the heck of it. Um, so when you brush this out, that'll put everything together. That part's gone. Um, I use this little copper brass brush, a brass brush that I got from Charlie Craven. Toothbrush. Yes, it, it says not for teeth right here. Charlie wrote that just for me because he knows how he knows how I am, not for teeth. And it's course, easy to get confused. Yeah. So you see that's that's nice and brushed out now, and it's ready to trim back. The problem with brushing it out first, though, is like Katie was getting worried because there's one going forward is now when I'm wrapping and I'm tying stuff in, these can get in my way. So I grab everything, grab a little hair clip, Katie won't mind. And I, I put it in right like this and that's gonna keep everything out of the way. All right, last material is gonna be a little bit of brown super fine. So I'm gonna pull this out. This can be very thin. It needs to be a very thin dubbing noodle. I'd rather be longer and thin. So I'm not really trying to build up a lot of bulk. What I'm trying to do is give the hackle something to kind of lay down in, but without bulk. Um, I don't know if that made sense. It's laying down in it, but not bulky. Oh, well, I hope that made sense. All right, so we've got a nice, oh, about a four inch, five inch W noodle here, which seems like a lot, but I'm going to cram it in here. So I'm going to put this, these, these wraps behind. We'll go ahead and start doing it behind. Now, and we'll look underneath to make sure that that wrap, we put it, put it back on the fly, please. So I want to look underneath to make sure that the wrap of dubbing that I just put on butts up against here. We don't want there to be a, a gap or anything in between these two things. Um, what's up, Ryan? Evening. Thank you for hopping on and everyone's comment that commented after Ryan or before Ryan, I missed. I was too busy looking at this fly. I'll put a couple wraps behind these legs. I think this one's ready to go in front. So you can see we're really trying to work these in kind of tight. And right here, see how that, that wrap slid down in that hole where um where my post material where my poly arms tied in because that, that's where it pulled there was a little hole there so we'll kind of build this up with this dubbing because this is what this is how the hackle is going to look nice because it's going to have a good I need just a pinch more it's going to it needs to have a good little base of, of hackle if the base is uh, messy then your hackle will be messy so now we'll do this one more time Maybe two more. Okay. And I'll pull everything back. Put a couple wraps there behind the eye. And my clip fell off. I keep using it and I broke off one of the tines. Maybe I'll have to go up and raid another one from Katie later on. All right. So we've got our, our, our hackle tied in. Or we've got everything tied in. All we need to do is wrap hackle and, um, and be done with it. So... First wrap is just straight up, straight down. 
like this. Then we'll go right beside that last wrap, go behind that that um, that leg. Now let's kind of fold this one back. So go right in front of it. Right in front of it again. Now I'm doing is just wrapping hackle. And as I said, the key is straight up, straight down. That's it. You're just wrapping the hackle. Easy day. I don't like how these, these legs are. First time I've used these legs and they're not, <clears throat> what's the word? They're not cooperating very much. You have to encourage them. They do. They're going to need some encouragement when I'm done here. So I'm going to hold my, my hackle tight and I'm just putting three wraps in. <clears throat> three wraps. And then I grab my foam and pull tight. So I just kind of have that sink, sink down. And now I've got my three wraps in there and now we're good. So I'm going to trim this off. Got my hackle trimmed off and let's see if I can fix these legs. So they're going to go out a little bit more. There we go. Kind of getting worried. They're going to go straight out. Yeah. Okay. So hey, go. Ken B. Thanks for watching. Ooh. We hope you have a great rest of the day. Oh, yeah. And by the way, on a side note, we tried our first uh, Vegemite. Vegemite. Do you do you eat Vegemite, Ken? Well, it's lunchtime. He may be going to make a piece of toast with some butter and Vegemite. But I don't. Is he New Zealand or is he Australia? He's Australia, right? He's New Zealand. I thought. Is he New Zealand? New Zealand has a different name of stuff, so I, they may have their own thing. But either way, it's still salty meat flavored gel. Salty meat flavored gel. That's, yes. That pretty well covers it. All right. So let's go back to the fly and we'll uh, play with this a little bit. So you can see my, my tail, my wing is way too long. So I just grab it, kind of bundle it up, put my scissors right up against the back. Maybe come out just a little bit, cut it. I've got a nice little wing there and that's going to be as much for a cider as it is for a wing, but that's going to help that line of flotation. The bones going to flotation. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to cut this kind of long. Kind of. That might be... Oh, I'm going to save that. Oh, well. might be a touch on the long side, so let's cut it maybe a short... Just a hair shorter. That's where you get in trouble. Start cutting it too short. It's about right. I'll cut off at an angle. Knock the corners off, make them a little bit... A little more round. So that looks fine like that. I will cut this one off a little more. It helps if I whisper to him. I don't want to cut my hackle. There we go. So we got that done for the legs. I'll pull these front ones forward. And kind of just a little bit longer than that. So let's see how that, how that is. And the back room pull back. Got them a little bit more in the leg than the back end. And now... We are good, except for a little bit of Sally Hansen's. Vegemite lettuce and cheese is good. Ken says, huh. I told him we were working our way up to that. The instructions on the Vegemite for, for unwitting Americans said to start out with a piece of, toast piece of toast with lots of butter and a tiny, tiny bit of Vegemite. And then try that for a week. And then the next week, same thing, a little bit less butter, a little more Vegemite. Try that for a week. And then the next week, barely any butter at all, coated in Vegemite. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how you like get yourself used to it. Yep. So let's look at the fly real quick. Um, all right. So I just put a little head cement on those thread wraps right there. And that head cement soaked back in. So that's going to help protect the fly. Um, we've got it right here is how it's going to ride. About like that in the water. So we've got plenty of hook gap there. One thing I didn't do is take a little piece of Velcro and rough this up here, which that'll give it a little bit extra little oomph in the water, a little more bugginess as if this thing needs any. So you can kind of do that. And then um, that's definitely a well fed hopper. That's one of those big bugs this up. year. Yep. Sure is. So that's the um, that's the top shelf hopper. Any questions so far? Could be called the well-fed. Yes, James, the well-fed hopper. That's a—he's a fatty. 
that's going to float for quite a while. He's been eating his Vegemite. Oh, it's a baby. Well, it said in the history of Vegemite when I was reading about it that they that a lot of Australians would put it on their baby's like fingers when they're teething to get used to it or to like it or I don't know. Better food than Vegemite. But in UK, well, they're talking Australia. So I don't know. Okay, so we're going to start the same way. You'll have to just excuse me. I'm going to stick with the same color thread. Oh, are we going again? So we're going to do our Christmas-themed one now. So same as before, start the thread. Get, work it back up. So the ADOT beige classic wax thread. And you know, the thread doesn't... The main reason I did the little bit thicker thread is so it doesn't cut into the... Um, uh, cut into the foam as easily. So let's switch it over to here, to this wonderful clean desk here. And I will make some room as Katie's switching the thing over. Yeah, we'll make that work. All bets are off down under, yeah. Katie, can you switch the camera over to the timetable, please? There we go. So we've got red and we've got insect green. Let's grab them real quick. So this is just kind of how I make it work. So would it work better to glue your phone together beforehand, says Joel? Um, no. Well, from I, I don't care to do that so much because when you're tying the, the hump in, tying them separately, um, it allows them to move a little bit here and there. And um, I, I prefer to have them one piece, but we do spray them um, and I've tied them together. So I don't want to say like, heck no. Um, I just, I can see an advantage. It's definitely more convenient to, um, to have the, uh, have, it, have it already glued. But so here, here's uh, the piece that I cut off of that, um, that last one. And I'm just using that kind of as a guide, like how, how thick do I want it? And I'll hold this little metal ruler there right here. And with my wheel straight up and down, and unfortunately that kind of went down there. So I can normally when I'm standing up I can get a good straight cut. And we've got two pieces that are nice and straight. Oh, somewhat <laughs> for sitting down at this thing moving, that's pretty straight. Um, ready to go to tie in. But I, I like this method with the metal ruler, the pad, and this little uh, Fisker's cutting wheel. It allows you to, to do pretty good um, pretty good cuts. We've got a cutting board as well. Or not cutting board, but a, a chopper. And that works fine too. Just kind of a pain getting it out. It's more in the way than anything. Oh, and just real quick, what kind of hook are we using again? We're using the A-Rex Freshwater 530, size 12. What's up there, Joe? Joe, you'll probably like Katie's shirt. You need to tell Roger to hop back on here. Roger has been on every single week except for this week. I haven't seen him hop on. So, Katie, do we want green or top or red on top? I'm going to say green because we got, unless you've got a, a better idea. I don't hear a better I don't. idea. Okay, we'll do I don't green. have a better idea. We'll do green on top because it'll be green with a white wing and red hackle. So same as before. Now use your imagination. Pretend like this is actually like a real nice fishy color. But um, I'm going to um, to flip this over. Katie, we switch it back to the ice, please. I'm sorry. Nan has me totally, totally. <laughs> I can tell. You're like. She's naming off all of this delicious food. Nan, I'm, I'm making our plane reservations right now. So just hold on. Is We're going to be eating us? well in no time. Now, are we going to England or are we going up to Nance? Oh, we're headed straight to uh, to the UK for some scones, some cucumber and butter sandwiches, some Yorkshire pudding, Ooh. shepherd's pie, some fish and chips with some uh, vinegar and oil. Well, that sounds fancy. Okay. Wait, not the oil, just the vinegar. So we've got that done. Our thread's not showing. That's what we'll make sure that right here, our thread's not showing. I'm going to cut another little triangle in the red. 
cut this angle it towards me capture it with my thread there we go nope missed it that should be about good just about and there we go so when i pull that up that'll be nice yeah it's an elf on the top shelf hopper elf on the top shelf that's right okay so we need some super fine what color do we want to do oh i know what color i want to do because i had it sitting out right here we have some nice caddis pupa there was one that was like green something but caddis pupa work is pretty green Oh, that is green. So I'm going to pull out some of that. Maybe a little bit more. That's definitely a caddis pupa. So if you guys <clears throat> are so inclined for the Whit Finish Wednesday, we can do, and we got green olive here. It'd be perfect. That's what I was thinking of. Um, you can do a elf on the top shelf hopper. Why not? Along with the ones you're actually going to. Purple ones you're going to slay the fish with. But I haven't really done much festive this year. So, right. So, the same thing. We're going to kind of guard this together, just aligning our fibers and getting it all nice and straight. You can see with that, I think you can see some sparkle in that, but that's not enough sparkle. I ought to have Katie pick out the color of this one. Who would do silver? I would pick out the color, Katie, but I don't just, know where the stuff is. Would you do silver or should we go with green? It's kind of like... Um, well, I mean, if, if you really want it to be like, you know, a Christmas tree, I would go with tinsel. Well, that's, that's, that's what this is right here, tinsel. I don't know how that's going to turn out, but hey. So I'm going to get a little bit of this. Oh, that's plenty. Look at that. That's, that looks like it. It's like what you vacuum up for a month. After you yeah, you don't want to overdo it or you're just going to be finding that stuff year round. Yep. All right, so we got our, <clears throat> our little bit here. Flip it back over to the vise. Switch it over. Maybe a little bit too much of the tinsel. Take a little bit of that out. So we're going to do a long noodle here. It might not go quite as long so I can <clears throat> um, see a little bit better. Try Rassica in DC. That's an Indian restaurant. Okay. See, Katie's he's paying attention up here. Well, it's the last time that we decided to try some foreign food. Mm. Well, we were in Lampredotto the, was not my favorite. No. When in Rome or when in Italy. When in Italy sometimes you Florence, don't want to be Lampredotto. Lampredotto. That was something else. So I'm going to go up, back down. Let's put a little bit more on. And yes, this is going on kind of quick. And we'll do just a little, little bit extra. <clears throat> of the tinsel. If I can get that to dub good. I'm like all rushing through it and I'm messing up. So we'll do this kind of fun right here because I've got an idea. Put a nice band here. And I'm going to grab my A Velcro to try to pick out just that tinsel. Oh, yeah. Now we're looking festive now, big time. You can see we got the tinsel hanging down, a little little bling. It almost looks like a Christmas tree right there. That looks like a, I tell you what, I'm looking at it on TV now, really up close. That looks like a mess, but I think that'll be okay for what we're going for. Okay. So now we want to run our thread back up. After you're tying this to fish, this is important. 
if you're tying it to the colors I'm just we're just kind of playing with. Bring this forward, push down, do a loose wrap, loose wrap, grab the foam, kind of angle it towards you, pull tight, couple wraps in front, back to where it was. So you can see us right there in the middle, looking fine. Grab the green, pull it up, pull it tight, push down, loose wrap, loose wrap, grab both, pull tight, pull tight. Now you can see we've got a nice little green and, and green and uh, red. Now I'll bring this back up to the front, push down, loose wrap, loose wrap, tight, one more. Now we're now we're looking good. So we'll lock this off. Get that down a little better. And those of you guys on Instagram, well, there's one person on Instagram. So thanks to the one person on Instagram. Sorry, we've been ignoring you. I mean, paid any attention. It's probably um, Ryan huh, sitting there watching. What's up, Surfer Dad on Instagram? He just hopped on. You were having a hard time with your YouTube working, right? Put that little dab of glue right there to stick them together. Pinch them tight. Looks fine. If you've got a little, <clears throat> little glob of glue like I do here, just use a separate piece of Boom, wipe it off, or just leave it alone. It'll be fine. Um, let's find another color. I think I saw one. Yes. How about for this green for our little flash? So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to grab two fibers. Now, if you don't have this uh, super flash, the, the crystal copper, sorry, crystal green, that's fine. Just uh, I prefer the midge crystal flash because it's smaller. Like this is this is this is just smaller flash. Got two pieces here. I'm trying to get a total of seven pieces to fold over. So two. I got four. Fold it over again. Now I've got eight. And I'm gonna take one out. So now I've got seven pieces. Bring this back. And bring the front over. So now I've got a nice little, nice little underwing. It's Christmassy. I can watch but not communicate. Well, Ryan, it's two now. Greg, well, we've got a few over on YouTube. So Greg, um, can you can you get on YouTube? I no, you're you're probably working, so you're actually busy, actually being productive, a productive member of society. So my thread at the front, I'm gonna capture this in as close as I can. Make sure my length is good. Bring my <coughs> thread back. Grab this other piece. Kind of cross it over. So right now, this is on one side. Grab that wing material. Pull it back, and that fills it in on the other side. It's okay right now. It looks like two separate wings. I'll explain why in just a sec. Because when I brush it all together, so we have two separate wings now. Just watch watch some magic happen here when I brush it out. Now we've got pretty much one wing. Yeah, there we go. All right, got one, one nice wing there, ready to go. And all we need now is legs. And I like those sparkly white legs and some hackle. And for those of you all who didn't see earlier, got one, two. We're gonna use this nice uh, hackle from Charlie Crave. And this is um, he just a custom dyed dragon's blood over grizzly. So Ooh. I think it'll be festive. And let's see what the size of this one is because I did pluck one off, but then I found two. So one of them's going to be wrong. That one might be a touch big, but that's okay. 
Let's see what this one is. I'd hate to go through all this work and have a wrong size hackle. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to take this this hackle feather here, so you can see where it was it was pulled off. You got that little got the place where it's pulled off there. Just kind of strip those fibers off. Trying to get all the gunk off of there. I'm going to take it and cut it off like so. I'm going to make sure I'm looking somewhat correct. There we go. So my hackles here, it's ready to go. And yep, that's going to turn fun. I'm going to grab my, my leg. I want the same sparkly white powered black legs. It doesn't quite have the same ring, does it, Don? Take the halls of bells of dress. I like his musical note signs. No, not. I so mean, much. you're singing. But I'm glad. I like the way you're thinking, Don. For sure. I like where your mind's at. That's right. You're trying to be Christmassy with dragon's blood, or with you know, we just won't call it dragon's blood. It's more like a springtime color. I don't think I don't think Charlie thought that um, mistletoe red would sell as well the rest of the year. Yeah. So I'll just kind of look. That one's not. I guess I want to get enough room to tie a couple wraps behind the the um, legs and a couple wraps of hackle in front of the legs. So just leave enough room. Oh, yes. Swear Angler, definitely. You need to, don't make your New, new Year's resolutions until <clears throat> New Year's. So you still have time. For sure. I do have this, but surely, no, I don't think I've got any of that. So we'll just say bread. We'll use a sparkle dab and see if we can make this work. <clears throat> so this is bright, bright red for the underbody. Now, normally it's super fine would be better, but I don't have like a a crazy, ridiculous, bright red, super fine on my desk right now, ready to go. Oh, too much. Keep twisting it up. Small pieces. And that's, I'm, I'm kind of being funny with this color combination, but this dubbing is a little bit harder to dub, this sparkle dub. And if you do small pieces, same thing with ice dub, they can be difficult. Just do small sections, it'll be a lot easier to dub on there. Save you a lot of heartache and headache. I'll go around. Before I start doing this, I want to pull all this out. Get my clip back out. Because the last thing I want is for Katie to get upset that I'm kept capturing any sort of wing fiber in my body. There we go. Now we'll pull this up. So this is getting to be nice and nice and purdy and red. I'm going, do you see right there where there's that, oh, where's my little thing? Um, where there's a little gap right here where it goes down. That's where that pair post or that um, poly yarn was tied in. So I need to fill that in with this red. And I, where'd it go? I breathed. I lost my piece of dubbing. Good thing I got a little bit more. I wish I could pan over your whole desk area so that they could see the, the mess. The mess. <laughs> It is a it is a wreck. There's no right better now. word. So if life is short by feathers, right? Slightly feathers. Yep. Yeah. Now this red dragon's blood is one that was like, oh, dude, that's so cool. And I got it and I've used it like not much. It's pretty cool. But maybe we ought to do it. We could do a giveaway of and we're give like strip off a bunch of feathers and you get some dragon's blood feather. Goodness. Pull us back. 
couple reps in the front. Okay, so now we got our nice big chunky uh, thorax ready to rock and roll <clears throat> with this red grizzly hackle. So we'll keep our fingers crossed. We'll see how this goes. Remember, we want to get two wraps behind. So that's one. Here's number two. Get out of there. Okay, so here's number two. I don't know if I want to put that one. Oh, put that one in front. Here we go. And put a couple wraps in front. And this one is just not wanting, these legs are not really, they look pretty, but they're not behaving quite like I would like. So we'll get those three wraps here to capture that hackle off. Pull, pull tight. We'll pull this back and we'll get a couple wraps. Three, four wraps there just to make sure everything's locked, locked off. Go ahead and cut our hackle stem. That one sparkle fiber is wild. Might cut a couple of these off so I'll capture my whip finish. Oh, that one. So, so far, so far, so good. All right, let's throw a whip finish on here and we'll call it trimmed up time and done time. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Trim that off. Now ready to play with these legs to kind of spread them out a little bit. So they're kind of right. Trim this off here, just butt it up, maybe a little bit longer. Front ones, let's go ahead and cut this. Knock the corners off. Pull the front ones out, make them just a touch longer than that head. Like that. Make these the same length as the back. And you can see we've got that, <clears throat> that ready to go. Throw a little, little head cement right here. I probably put one to me wraps a hackle there. So I might cut those off before I put head cement on. I'll, I'll look at it. But um, we've got our nice Christmas themed uh, elf on the top shelf hopper. So cool. And that'll be, that'll be, if that was in different colors, I'd say it probably still work. But if that was in different colors, hence the, so right here, this works really good for a um, for a uh, dry on dry dropper. Santa's blood. I like that big nasties fly. Big nasties fly. Everyone on Instagram, love for you to come over and hop out and check us out on YouTube if you can. Um, for everyone on YouTube, thank you so much for hopping on with us tonight. Uh, remember to uh, get your chance at a um, new pair of Renamed scissors, just use hashtag Whip Finish Wednesday uh, or comment on our YouTube video after it's posted, after it's uploaded. The Amaze a Man, the Maze, the Maze a Men, Amen, Amen, maybe. Thank you. And Don, thank you. Joe, appreciate it. Hey, we're trying to be festive. What can I say? And Patrick, oh, uh, why not? And just for the hay of it, I'll throw some, uh, some, I will see if I can talk Katie and taking a picture of this on the post. If we can get somewhat. We should fish okay. it. We should fish it. And then when we catch the fish, we can put a Santa hat on the fish's head. That's right. We could, but would you rather us throw this in with the scissors and give it away or fish it? Both. We'll just have to, how about that comment in the, on the YouTube video after it's posted, fish it or give it. And that'll give you something to do. Fred Hurst has... Thank you for noticing, Nan. I picked out that red color. That is Hugh 200. He is so grumpy. He's so grumpy about Christmas. He's he he's is. just like a uh, ball humbug. He is. Um, Santa hat. 
That would be, yeah, that'd be good. It's a high vis hopper, correct? So, um, Red Bad Scissors, hashtag whip finish Wednesday, uh, or comment on the the YouTube video, and you will will give away those scissors yesterday. Thanks a lot, Ed. We're on Instagram. Um, for everyone who has hopped on YouTube, thank you so much. If you don't already subscribe <laughs> to our channel on YouTube, please subscribe. We really appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate all your support, all your suggestions. If there's something you'd like to see us tie, shoot us a note. We should we move will... it around the house in oh, different yes. poses each and every day. Yes, all the many different poses we could do we and could do make it look like when we're sleeping at night that it's it's just flown about the house. Yes, and like hanging out with a toothbrush. A and... Yes, in the toilet, on the toothbrush, in the dog bowl. On the butt, on the stick of butter in the fridge, on the Vegemite, in the Vegemite, just all over the place. That might be the first one we do, right in the Vegemite. So, um, just so those of you who do not know what Vegemite is, like I didn't, you'll be like, huh, huh, that's it. When I brewed beer, that was definitely Vegemite was a flavor that yours is an off flavor, but it was a flavor nonetheless. Yeah, so definitely put one too many wraps of hackle on there. Um, so guys, thank you to everyone. Fly time maniac. Jason, where are you at on the old tube? But right back at you. I'll zoom back out so you can oh, put it in the put it in Fred's beat. That's why not? Why can I not? There we go. Fred's beak would not a good place. So we'll take a bunch of pictures and they'll be in our stories on Instagram. That'll be kind of fun. Good idea. Very good idea. Um, you know, when it comes to colors, it comes to time and stuff at the end of the day, it's all about having fun. And as long as you're having fun, then, um, then that's the, the whole point. And, um, when people start getting all upset over one thing or the other, uh, I tell them, if you're not having fun doing this, you're doing something majorly wrong. I think you knew, <laughs> I think so. So guys, I'll turn it over to Katie. Nikki, thank you so much. Um, we need to do a thing where we, we can poll some poll everyone to figure out different your favorite flies of the year from what fish Wednesday, the ones you caught fish on, and also where everyone's from because Katie and I are gonna go fishing this weekend, aren't we, Katie? Yeah. We're gonna go fishing. And if someone's driving through Tennessee or Virginia, they can come over and fish with us. Mm -hmm. Why not? But um, anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. We love uh coming on. We'll be live next Wednesday night at nine o'clock. And um, until next time, here's Katie. Bye, guys. Have a great weekend. Happy, merry, early Christmas. Until next time. Bye. See you later.